Yeah, Tuesday. What's up, everybody? Tuesday morning edition of the Daily Market Commentary. I'm your host, Chuck Fulkerson. Hope everybody had a great trading day yesterday and a wonderful weekend as we uh, we had yesterday down from the DMC, but we are rolling today. Uh, last night, we did have our live trade room. So for those of you that joined us, we had a couple of positions last night that... Uh, that triggered in the overnight sessions. Uh, you may or may not have entered some of those positions, some of them for profit, some of them for small losses, uh, but that uh, that's the way the proverbial cookie crumbles. If you're new to the channel, do me a favor, click the subscribe button, hit the notification bell so you get the alerts and the updates. And question of the day, question of the day, do you do set and forget trades in an overnight uh, trading scenario. Uh, I know a lot of people who do not do that, uh, and I typically do not unless I go to bed and I really, really see a an un you know an an undeniable reason for doing so. I I love to see the arrival into a position before getting into the trade, uh, but sometimes some people do. And so let me leave your comments down below. I want I want you to comment down below uh, and let me know what about what are your thoughts on set and forget it trades in an overnight scenario. Okay, let's go ahead and dive in the S and P this morning. We are up six and three quarter points. Looked like we were going to be a bit bearish last night, so I thought that there was an opportunity to jump in a little prematurely on this little 15-minute supply area um, if you were going to jump in and give that that little 15-minute supply area a run. I thought that it was a decent level. Now, I will say that we did get a lot of basing here in front of the level, which kind of negates the quality of that zone, and we've just come up to it here recently in the last few moments um, and it uh, and it popped right through that area because of the basing. Remember, basing is the kiss of death for a level. Um, but the thing I want to look at is what did we do right at the European market open? And the European market open to me is always an important zone. And so I'm going to look right here, right at that London open time, because that's really what I what I want to see is do we do we come back into that region? later today uh, that would be the area that I think is worth worth considering now I I was uh, a little bit premature in that uh, in that potential to jump short because we are still technically in an upward trend our uptrend has not ended uh, and so any shorts are going to be a bit premature uh, at this uh, at this point so if you go to your four hour, you can still see that we are still in an upward trend scenario this little, swing high right here made me say, you know, it's worth maybe attempting a little short. Uh, and that was why I was okay doing it. It was only a little two or three point position. Um, now what I see, you know, kind of continuing on that same pathway is that that would be our area of demand would be right there at the European market open. Now we did also look at the NASDAQ as a, uh, as a potential area. Now, this one we were looking at for a potential long scenario on the 15-minute chart, and uh, we came pretty close to getting that order filled and unfortunately didn't quite make it all the way in. Uh, came back down into uh, this region right here, which was this little drop base strong rally away, and that's actually where price reversed and moved up in the overnight. So I still think this level here, still valid on a, on a smaller time period, um, we would need some some basing to make a breakout candidate above this region, but I think basing to, would make sense uh, in that area if price comes back into that zone, gives you an opportunity to get long. Crude oil. Crude oil, we are still between our major levels of both supply and demand or support and resistance. And I've been, you know, I'm, I've been pretty consistent in analyzing the September contract so I think this sets up for an opportunity to wait for price to get above this area of resistance or below this area of support. I don't think it makes sense to try to jump um, in between those areas, trying to take, you know, tiny little moves. All right. Um, looking at gold. So in our gold levels, we had a little 60 minute zone here where price rallied up. Uh, we did get, you know, a little bit of a move away out of this gold uh, came right back to the origin of the move up just about uh, and then has popped through. Now, technically, your stop would have to be above this pivot, so you've not been stopped out. But one, two, three, four, five, six candles later, price had gone nowhere. You're basically back to where you started. Uh, and so, you know, in the overnight, that one didn't really give us the move we were we were looking for. Uh, although technically no stop out yet because it's not been above that pivot. Um, so, 
you know, I, I would say that this is about a is 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 about par for the course when you've got price doing this, right? When you've got price just just staying in this range, this is very sideways, very range bound. I'm not necessarily using these trend lines as areas of support and resistance, but I do want to you know realize that we are very very range bound and we're going fairly sideways inside of here. I think the better probability is to break out down and then maybe hit some of this demand area. But there is certainly the opportunity to break out one way or the other. So if you want to take the breakout trade, you can look for a break above or below this triangle pattern, you know, knowing that it, that a symmetrical triangle has to have five touches, right? Touch one, two, three, four. We do have five touches, and they have to come, you know, one after the other opposite sides. And typically when you do get a break on a symmetrical triangle, it's, the, it's a measured move from touch two directly to the opposite side. That is typically the measured move. And so if we do get that kind of a breakout here, to the upside, that puts our measured move at about 1826. To the downside, it actually puts our measured move down here to 1600. So this uh, this demand here price uh, could have a hard time getting through there if we break out to the downside. But just keep this in mind for those of you that do trade those triangle patterns. I do look at triangle patterns. I don't necessarily trade the breakout, but I wanted to highlight it for those of you that do in case you're interested. Um, today, for me to trade that breakout pattern, what I'm going to need is a more traditional breakdown, which means three touches basing before the level following all of our all of our breakout rules, and I just don't have that set up as of yet. All right, moving over to bonds and currency. So in our ZN trade, got a nice little move out of our ZN level last night. Uh, for those of you that took that one, we got price rallied up into our supply zone. Uh, and this one had a really nice arrival into our supply zone and then uh, has moved away from there really nicely. But we traded all the way to the top of that level, so I need to remove that zone. So that trade worked out really well. And now we're sitting at a potential for a breakdown if we get more basing. Now, we did just pop below here, but that's there was no basing there to really give us a reason. If I get two or three candles here, I think we have a potential breakdown. Without the basing, it is not going to be good. And then we're going to look for a retest into this area right here. Uh, next would be our Aussie position. Now, on, in the Aussie, we did have this very strong move down right at the Australian market, uh, right at the Aussie market's open. And I had anticipated that maybe halfway up, we would get a little opportunity for a reversal. Um, we came up and we based immediately before the level. Um, and we all know what basing immediately before the level does to the level. Um, and then that's where price just popped right through that area on that basing right immediately before the level. Now, this is a, an example of a flip level, however. So one thing to consider is how often basing immediately before a level invalidates a zone, right? So this supply zone gets invalidated with basing immediately before the level. However, when we think about what happened in this basing, this basing occurred because we had we had an equilibrium of buy orders and sell orders just below here. Price rallied up into this region and we ran out of willing sellers. All right, we ran out of willing sellers, so price went through. But what happened to all the buyers that were in here that caused this basing and caused price to thrust through? Well, those buyers didn't go anywhere. They just remained unfilled. And that's why this became a uh, an area that was a flip area of demand and price then moved away from that zone. It's a it's actually a really pretty picture of why those flip areas work the way that they do and got a really nice move out of out of that level. Now, if uh, if you missed it and you say, okay, well, what what's the where's it going overall? Well, we're in a four hour sideways trend. So the market's still sitting sideways. And and we're in that that four hour sideways trend is really what's what's giving all of our currency markets that kind of a picture. And and you can see that. Let me slide over to the dollar here real quick. You can see that when looking at the 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 Dixie, uh, the U.S. dollar index. Uh, I mean, we can just see exactly where we are, right? Right in here, we're seeing the dollar just chop along sideways, which is why the rest of the currencies are very difficult to trade in this kind of market condition. Um, next would be our euro position. So in the euro, we also had another little level, same place that the that the uh, the Aussie level was, where we had. Uh, a pretty decent move away from it, but this Globex session just just popped right through, 
acted as demand, and now we've rallied up through it. Um, if I look at this on the four hour, you'll see a very similar picture uh, in this one. Now, I will say that this is a better breakdown if we get below this confirmation area, right? If we get below this confirmation area, I can see a really nice breakdown candidate based on the four hour chart. We're just a little far away from that at the moment. Um, looking above at supply areas, you know, you've got a little supply area here, but that's already been tested by this wick. I've got this supply area up here, um, which is fairly far away, and I've got one up here. This would probably be the one that I'm most interested in, but we're fairly far away from that zone, and I, that means I would need some sort of basing and a breakout before I'm willing to get long on one of these positions. So we may see a bit of basing here uh, to get us an opportunity to get long. We just have to see if that basing happens first. If not, look for a retest back to one of these levels. Canadian dollar. So on our Canadian dollar trade, price did come down into our demand zone and then rallied back up to our supply level for a nice little, a nice little trade, and that traded all the way to the bottom of the zone. So that zone is no longer useful. Came into this area, and the same thing that happened here is what happened in the Euro and the Aussie. It popped through the origin of that bigger, uh, that bigger move down. And so now we would be looking for a retracement back into this level here. Um, I think this level here is what makes the most sense, uh, primarily because it was resistance here and then also served as important levels over there. So let's see if we get a reversal back into that zone. Great British pound and Japanese yen as those other uh, final two markets. So in the Great British pound, we were looking at a potential breakdown uh, below this region here, provided that I get the basing. Unfortunately, the basing didn't come. Uh, and so we got to look a bit higher. I think your next level would be this area up here for supply. But what are we doing on the four hour, right? We are, it is very sideways price action on the four hour. So um, in the one hour, this area here is a fairly clean drop base drop here below the pivot that might be worth reviewing. If I go to a 15 minute chart, uh, you know, on a 15 minute, actually, I don't like it as much. Uh, it's not as clean on the 15 because of this upper wick retesting this area. Hmm. So on the 15 minute, I like some of these lower levels in here than I than I do the uh, the upper one. And this is the problem with a four hour trend. So I'm just going to hold off until I get a better opportunity showing up inside the four hour. I'm not going to add anything to my to my pound trades. Uh, and then the Japanese yen, very strong sell off in the yen. Um, we have uh, a little bit of a rally up that it rallied uh, for a little bit last night, came back to its to a uh, to a little wick over wick area, and now kind of continuing a bit of a rally higher on the four hour. Uh, we've seen lower swing low here, lower swing high. So prices are definitely in a in more of a selling environment on our four hour chart. This is a clean, clean supply area up here, just below the pivot high, which I think is still going to be pretty valid. Uh, if we drop back down from here, look for basing for a potential reversal. I think the moral of the story for today is that in a sideways market, forcing a trade is 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 not going to be something that's that's very beneficial to anybody. And allow yourself to wait for a strong trend identification on the four hour chart. Trend identification on the four hour chart is going to get you better opportunities. Could I shrink all the way down to a five minute chart to force trades? Yes, I could. But I can't tell you how many traders I've seen that sink down to five minute charts and they they wind up forcing too many trades and then hurting themselves overall. So I don't go to five minute charts for that particular reason. I stick to 15 minutes um, and that's what gets me better opportunities and better trades overall. So if you guys have any questions, please give me a heads up, support at tradersarmy.com. I appreciate you joining us today. Uh, we will be, uh, for those of you that are Trader Armors members, uh, Justin Krebs teaching a class today on uh, larger time frame trading style. So I look forward to seeing you in the live trade room today on larger time frame sessions. Uh, and then I will uh, talk to you soon. See ya.